Hi welcome, today I am going to explain about the film A Quiet Place Part 2. Spoilers ahead watch out fully. Driving into a town, Lee Abbott, John Krasansky, stops at a supermarket to buy oranges. We can notice rocket space toys at the shop. The store owner is watching the news when it reports on an incredible bomb in China. Lee then makes his way across the neighborhood to a park where his wife Evelyn, Emily Blunt, is pushing their youngest child Bo onto a swing. The Abbott family is there to watch Marcus, the oldest son, play baseball. Lee greets his friend Emmett, Killian Murphy, who is seated behind them with his youngest kid, as he sits next to Regan, his eldest and only deaf daughter. The ball is batted by Emmett's oldest son, who hits a home run. The audience and Emmett are yelling, dive, as he approaches the final base, because the fielders are nearby. Emmett then asks Regan how to say, dive, to which she responds in American Sign Language by making a diving motion with her hands. As Marcus steps up to the plate, Bo and Evelyn wish him luck. Marcus misses the opening two balls before becoming preoccupied by a big meteor in the sky. The game ends, and everyone starts driving or walking back to their houses. Evelyn takes the boys while Regan travels with her father. However, the aliens have already arrived and have begun attacking the city, killing numerous humans. The action of A Quiet Place 1 is cut to the Abbott family leaving their home in bare feet. By this time, days 472 to 473, Lee has died defending Marcus and Regan from an alien, the house is ablaze and flooding, and Evelyn has just killed several aliens with the aid of Regan's cochlear implant feedback noise amplified by a speaker that weakens the aliens. At the start of A Quiet Place 1, Bo took a space rocket toy from the store. The sound of the item attracted an alien who immediately attacked. Bo perished on day 89 as a result. Evelyn tells Marcus and Regan to stay there as she sneaks back into the flooded cellar and attempts to keep quiet as she swims in search of an oxygen tank just before leaving the farm. Regan leaves Marcus with the infant while announcing that she is returning to the house. The microphone and amplifier are collected by Regan. She removes a cord from the amplifier with her clipper. Returning separately, Regan and Evelyn follow the family's sand path until they reach the furthest point, whereupon they silently step onto the dried leaves and continue their journey. The family arrives at a wire fence that has a gap in it. As Evelyn passes through, her bag gets hooked, making a little noise. She looks back, worried about the noise, and unintentionally trips a trip wire, causing a stack of bottles to collapse and jangle. Marcus and Regan hear Evelyn mutter, run, to them. While this is happening, we change viewpoint to look at the family from a gun's fixed point of aim. The family is being pursued by an alien. Marcus is injured by a bear trap while running which he manages in silence until he notices his hurt foot and lets out a savage scream. Regan utilizes the amplifier, microphone, and cochlear implant hearing aid to create feedback that is intolerable to the alien while Evelyn tries to stop him from screaming. As the alien tries to block out the sound, Evelyn shoots it in the head. The family enters a nearby abandoned structure. A man grabs Evelyn as they turn a corner, covers her mouth, and signals, sh, while pointing to an alien on the ceiling. The man guides the family into an underground soundproof vault. When he is secure, 
he informs the family that they must go because there is not enough food or water. Evelyn asks, Emmett, thinking she recognizes the man, and Emmett removes his baseball cap and scarf to reveal his face. He reiterates that they must leave. When Evelyn inquires about Emmett's children, he replies that his sons passed away on day one. Evelyn inquires about his wife Lola. He tells that Lola passed away eleven weeks ago, that she fell ill and that they moved to this abandoned warehouse's soundproof basement once the pain became intolerable and she started screaming. I couldn't do enough, declares Emmett. Evelyn queries whether Emmett would see the fires that Lee set each evening and whether he knew it was him, Lee. As per Emmett, he did. Evelyn queries why he did not pursue them given that they were buddies. In a quiet place one the Abbott family had not had any communication from anyone and heard no radio transmissions. Despite searching and looking, very few survivors were left on earth. The people who have left, according to Emmett, you don't know, do you? They're not people worth saving. You're nothing like him, Lee, Regan signs and murmurs to Emmett. Emmett tells that he and Lola just learned about that signal after they moved up here because you can't hear it down in the valley, where the Abbots lived. Regan determines that the signal comes from a nearby island that is roughly a day's walk away. Marcus is awakened by her in the middle of the night, and they both walk to the soundproof vault to chat. By following railway tracks to the ocean and then locating a boat, Regan tries to persuade Marcus to assist her in finding a way to the radio tower. After learning that Regan left in the morning, Evelyn begs Emmett to find her and bring her back. He finally concedes when Evelyn says she wishes Lee were here to tell him Regan is precisely the kind of person who is worth preserving. Marcus leaves the bunker and wanders around the base after putting the baby to sleep. The baby's oxygen tank is shown in the cut, with the baby's oxygen level gauge in the red since it is getting low. Marcus discovers a room upstairs that is plastered in drawings of Emmett's sons. Following the path she and her family take to get to the store, where Lee purchased oranges on day one, she returns to the sand path and makes her way there. She passes the bridge where Bo died and a temporary shrine on her way there. She sobbed as she stroked the images and set her wedding ring atop the cross. Marcus leaves the bunker and wanders around the base after putting the baby to sleep. The baby's oxygen tank is shown in the cut, with the baby's oxygen level gauge in the red since it is getting low. Marcus discovers a room upstairs that is plastered in drawings of Emmett's sons. Marcus, who is having trouble breathing, realizes from his watch that he must open the door. He tries with the door for a while before giving up in frustration. When he unlocks the baby's trunk, he hears the infant crying. He begins sharing oxygen with the infant while displaying a hurt expression till he nods out. When Regan and Emmett get at the island, they discover a colony of residents who have isolated themselves there and are leading regular lives. The National Guard ordered as many people as possible to be stationed on the islands after it was discovered that the animals couldn't swim. However, one of the creatures makes it to the island on a different boat and murders a number of people. The creature follows them inside the radio station when they entice it to flee to that location. Once it hears Regan and Emmett, the alien slashes Emmett with its claws. But as it pursues Regan, she manages to switch the station's sound from the song to the noise her hearing aid made, weakening the creature until she can kill it with a pole. Marcus, 
who has picked up the signal over the radio, utilizes the noise to weaken the creature and kills it with a shot, making it possible for anybody to do so. Thanks for watching this awesome recap. Subscribe for regular movie updates.